I love you. Hey Samantha, how are you today? I'm doing all right, how are you? I'm good, and I'm really excited to talk about your film. One, I cried a lot when watching this film. <laughs> Took me on a complete emotional roller coaster in the best of ways though. Yeah. And um, one of the things that I think is really apparent in the film is how difficult it is when it comes to working with threatened wild animals and introducing those animals back into the wild. Yes. Um, you do this all the time. <laughs> so what's, what's the biggest thing that you hope people learn and walk away with from this film? Yeah, I mean, like you mentioned, it's a very... It's a very difficult process and, and one that we are refining our methodologies for like every day because every single animal, every case that comes to us is different and even every wild ocelot has their own personality. So there's so much to learn still and we're still kind of like refining those methods. But um, I guess what I would want people to take away from the film is, is you know, it, some of those issues of like why we got Khan and Keanu in the first place kind of play a back seat and just to kind of like think about, you know, wildlife trade and trafficking and the pet trade and like why, why are these issues that we're still seeing, why have they increased, you know, even since the pandemic and, um, you know, self-educating and, and, and hopefully supporting causes like Oja Nueva. When I went to the jungle for the first time, I honestly didn't really expect to, to come back alive. I was dealing with some extreme um, depression. Um, I was, you know, young and I had just been to war. And so my mental health was really quite, um, quite fragile. And so when I went to the jungle, it was honestly to leave this world. Um, and for, for this incredible and natural and beautiful place called the Amazon rainforest to make me who I am today and to, to bring me life and to bring me joy, um, is just absolutely incredible and I definitely think that we as humans need to look at the impact that we are having on the world because without natural places like the Amazon, um, we're not going to be the healthiest that we can possibly be. This is your first feature. Why was this the story that you were like, it's time? So I uh, was a still photographer before making this film and believe it or not, um, I, like eight years ago, was not a fan of documentaries. I actually like despised them and basically never watched them. And Melissa was a huge fan of documentaries and was breaking me down. And I think right around that same time, documentaries were starting to be made very differently. And, and so, um, and I think technology certainly had something to do with that. Like, you know, with digital cameras, we're able to film so much more now and Verite films are changing and they feel much more like scripted films. Uh, so Melissa was slowly breaking me down and, and convincing me that documentaries were, were, were the, you know, they're the thing, right? Um, and so I started watching some um, begrudgingly, but was convinced by her um, that, that they were really sort of the center of storytelling right now um, in terms of like moving the needle on important issues that we care about. And, uh, and so that kind of is, is how it all happened, really. I, and so I was at convinced and was keeping my eyes open for, for a, you know, a film that we could work on. Um, and I was in the Amazon rainforest and actually just stumbled upon uh, Harry and Samantha by accident. Uh, I met them in a hotel room and learned about their story from a mutual friend. And then they had a hard drive with them when I actually officially met them and they plugged it into my computer. And on it was just this extraordinary footage that they had filmed together of their work rewilding orphaned wildlife um, that had been taken from from the rainforest for the legal pet trade. And I was blown away by, you know, when they chose to film, um, when they chose to keep recording, even during difficult moments. And I was also blown away by the quality of the cinematography. And so I, I immediately knew that there was an amazing film to be made from from this archive that they had. And, and, and that's when I called Melissa on a satellite phone and told her, you know, hey, I, I think I've got a film for us. So it was all very much accidental. Yeah, and I think with our work being, you know, having focused on conservation storytelling for, for almost a decade now, um, when you stumble upon a story like this that has such a clear narrative and has these elements and these the depth of themes with human and nature and the animal, you know, the animal reintroduction, the conservation ideas, but that aren't hitting you over the head, that are more rooted in this journey and this emotional um, arc, for us, it's really exciting because I think, you know, as conservation storytellers, you're always looking for 
different stories that can help pull new audiences in um, and take people on these really emotional journeys. You know, throughout this whole process, I was dealing with my own stuff at the same time as trying to really support someone else in the best way that I could and then trying to get this project off the ground and that is you know our nonprofit and um, was juggling a lot of things um, so it was you know it was, a, it was a hard process and that's why I like to look at Wildcat as kind of an origin story of, of me and my work in Peru and kind of those like first couple of years um, which for a lot of people, they don't have to have broadcasted, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, what is that like, you know, having not only like this startup that you're pouring all of your energy into, but also having your own personal journey, the good, the bad, and the really ugly sometimes, like having that broadcast to people all over the world. How yeah. do, what is that feeling like? <laughs> oh gosh, well, I mean, they didn't use everything that they could have. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so there's, you know, it. I think it's, I think there's there's little pieces in there. I, you know, I'm at a point where I've kind of, if I, I feel like if this film can help people in different ways, then I'm super open to speaking about some of those, you know, experiences and traumas because because it would help other people that are going through something similar. Um, but it, yeah, it's, it's kind of surreal. I think, you know, at, at the time we never really thought that this was going to be a, it was supposed to be like a short documentary and then it became a feature documentary. And then, and then, but when you, think about it you don't think about it being on Amazon Prime <laughs> so yeah. so yeah for the world to see and it's it's a bit surreal one thing that we've learned both by having screened it you know now since our premiere this fall um, and one thing that we've found even just with ourselves is that this film because there's so many different entry points and nuances of themes layered themes um, it sounds cliche but I think we really hope that people take away what they need to take away from this story. Um, and I think it resonates differently with different people. And it is, it's very much a reflection of what we are going through or the viewer is going through more than what's on screen, if that makes sense. So, you know, I hope one of the larger goals is I hope it kind of cracks us open and allows us to have conversations that we might not have had before um, about some of the things that we're struggling with or that we've experienced in our lives. And then I think more largely, you know, I think we really hope that this film does give people that connection with nature and, and these wild places and shows the importance of them and the power of them and that, you know, this is something worth feeling and investing in and, and hopefully protecting.